this was one where initially the stock was uh, down a lot, which didn't make any sense to me. Then it was up big. And uh, look, all I can tell you is the stock became a value stock. How that happened is unbelievable. Matter of fact, you could say, well, listen, under Lloyd, under Lloyd Blankfein, it became a value stock in part because what people uh, people got away from thinking that trading is as good because trading was essentially outlawed by the government. And now we got this quarter today, and it did not show a fantastic equities number. But look, what can I say? This thing has a $194 book. It added big book $194 value. $194.37 cents. book value. So that picker. gives you a sense as to what it's trading at as a multiple so book, not much above one. What Goldman is Goldman Sachs. I mean, we had a, 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 I think we had a Goldman on as an analyst this morning on Squawk. And if we, we talked about the idea that maybe the Goldman's not the Goldman of, of old. I would come back and say, it's the toughest place to get a job, and if you use that measure for Silicon Valley, that would mean that it's still attracting a oh lot of people. Oh, my God, it still, it still attracts some of the best. They compete for talent, frankly, against Amazon and against Netflix or Facebook and Google. That's where they compete, which just gives you a sense still in terms of the quality of people they're able to bring into this franchise. And their franchises are still strong in many ways. They are, of course, moving more strongly now into consumer finance, which is in a right. small that, that, That's a very hard But it hard will be business. interesting to see how Mr. Solomon sort of positions the company. His tenure, by the way, is probably likely to be half of that of what Mr. Blank finds Well, that's part. Why did Lloyd... Because, Lloyd's, you know, right. uh, David's in his mid-50s. Mr. Solomon is in his mid-50s at this point, and you'd imagine maybe seven years at the helm is a likely tenure at this point. So it will be interesting to see what he's able to do during that period of time. Right, and he's from and a different branch. He, not trade. Yep, he's a banker. Right. He's a banker. Matters, started, that's uh, where the big margins are. Uh, but but know, he came over in 99, I think, but he was at Bear Stearns for many years. Look, I, I think that I, th ooh, true confessions. A lot of my friends are retiring at uh, major firms. And the reason why they're retiring is because they've gotten the directive that unless you want to maintain these fabulous people who are in their 50s, you got to step down and let them make the big money. Now, fortunately, most of the people who are doing this that I talk to are so wealthy. It's, you know, don't cry for me, Argentina, Brazil, Latin, Colombia. Let's throw in <laughs> Belize, you know, a capital city. Uh, but, but you end up with a situation where they have no choice. So I think that a lot of people say, well, wait a second. Lloyd is at the prime of life. And we can talk about Jamie in a second. But Lloyd's at the prime of his life. What's he doing? And the answer is he's making it so the other people who are at the prime of their life don't leave, which is what happens if you don't do this. So I really need people. I mean, it's again. It's only because of commonality where I, I, I've now talked to the 10th person in my class, and I no longer say, but you're so young. I say, yeah, they retired. Yeah, okay, <laughs> what do you got? Are you going to Audubon Society with your plan? That sort of oh, speaks to what side. Lloyd told Andrew Ross Sorkin in some comments, which we'll share with you in a little bit. But I think you did talk to him a while ago, David. Yeah, we do. I mean, but, you know, well, on my last interview with David Solomon took place, let's call it right at the end of April of this year. And we talked about what we typically would, of course, because he has been a banker focused uh, uh, in part on, on CEOs and on companies in terms of their needs. Um, this now will require, of course, a much broader view on his part. That's already been going on as he's known he's going to get that top job. But here's what he had to say just in terms of a conversation we typically have had about the environment as it relates specifically to mergers and acquisitions. A lot of these transactions make sense. The world's tr changing. These big consolidations, because industry lines are blurring, are really, really important for people to maintain their competitive position. And so I think boards and CEOs have to balance, you know, strategically, what do we need to do to be well positioned in an ever increasingly dynamic environment, you know, versus the fact that it's harder to get this stuff done. So the Solomon era will soon begin at Goldman yeah. Sachs. Well, I, I do want to point out that investment banking is regarded as less episodic as trading. So I think there are people who feel that maybe Goldman Sachs could get a better multiple. I know that's not what you necessarily shoot for, but I think that there's just a kind of a disbelief, particularly people I know at Goldman, that the company's being valued so poorly versus its cohort. Well, we'll see. When we're sitting here in seven years and he's announcing his retirement, we'll see if it's trading at a higher multiple to book. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.